And Tom, you can start to share and to move ahead, please. Shall, shall I try and do full screen and if, if it works? Or it didn't work before, but I can try again. Yeah, I think this mode is looking good and you can move ahead, I suppose. Okay, uh, to see, uh, see the next slide? Yes, mm -hmm. great. great, yes. Well, thanks very much to the organizers for the uh, for the opportunity to speak. Um, I have actually been to Hefei before uh, on my way uh, to to, the, to climb the Yellow Mountain, and uh, so this is this is a long time ago, but this is proof that I made it to the top, uh, and I, I look forward to to returning someday in the future, hopefully. Uh, so I'm going to talk about developments in Hilbert series uh, for EFT. This is based on uh, work uh, with Sridip Pal. Um, with Wei Guan Kao, Franz Herzog, Jasper Ruzmel Nepvum, and with Lucas Graf, Brian Henning, Xiaoshuan Liu, and uh, Hitoshi Moriyama. And so, Hilbert series and some more general uh, ideas to do with polynomial rings used in EFT has sort of been developed uh, in recent years uh, through a series of papers. And what's emerged, I think, is their use as a, as a novel probe of, of effective field theory. Uh, and sort of revealed underlying mathematical structures there that are, that are, that are of interest to study in themselves to, to learn something about EFT. Uh, another aspect of all of this, of course, is uh, a sort of maybe an, an original motivation as well, was to, uh, to deal with the organization of operator bases, which would be sort of systematic uh, construction, which we've, we've heard a lot, a lot about in this session already today. And so in this talk, I'm just going to give you some, some new developments that are happening and sort of trying to give a broad overall picture of, uh, of where, uh, where these ideas might be headed. And so in terms of the novel probes, um, I'm going to tell you about uh, asymptotic expansions, what that means is a, is a study of a, a high temperature behavior of the EFT. Uh, and then on the organizational front of operator bases, I'm going to tell you about developments for, for loop calculations. Uh, which is work to appear. Jasper Rusmel Netvu will be giving a talk, uh, I believe, tomorrow at this, at this workshop. And also, their application to, to EFT is where you have nonlinear symmetries uh, uh, that your fields are, are transforming under. Okay. And so, as a way of sort of just giving a, a brief background to this and, and, and also to, to outline uh, the, the, uh, the talk. Uh, let me let me tell you about the sort of the connected, the interconnected picture, the five picture of ES, uh, EFT structure that sort of emerged out of out of these papers here. And so there's, there's a triangle. So this this point of the triangle is is the, the the motivation of systematically constructing EFTs. So, for example, the standard model EFT uh, systematically constructing uh, uh, op the operator content uh, in, in mass dimension. And so, for example, getting out of the dimension eight uh, number uh, for the first time. And the systematic here deals with these field redefinition and uh, integration by parts uh, redundancies. So that's one, one aspect of this. Uh, on this part of the triangle here is the connection to partition functions uh, of, of well, here free conformal field theories. And so this, this comes about by the realization that if you want to construct operators in, in some Lagrangian, it's the same thing as really constructing operators in the free field theory. And the free field theory is, is a conformal field theory, so you can use a state operator correspondence. Uh, and that means that you really are constructing states in this free field theory. And when you're constructing states, you're constructing a partition function for the theory. And so this is the same, the same problem is constructing the partition function for the, for the free, theory, free theory of, in this case, uh, the, the, the standard model. And there you want to use the symmetries of the, of, the, of the free theory, which is indeed this conformal symmetry. And this is, you know, when you construct a Hilbert space, you should always use the, use the symmetries that are available and use the, the representation theory. And so this is where this whole conformal representation theory came in. And this actually gave a very um, useful handle on how to do this, uh, this systematic construction. And at the bottom of this triangle, uh, there's this connection to the S matrix. So this is the sort of uh, the, connect, the, the connection between the redundancies from the Lagrangian point of view, these field definitions, uh, or sometimes well, equations of motion at linear level, and integration by parts redundancies, uh, how they manifest themselves sort of in Fourier space and momentum space, which are uh, the on-shell conditions and uh, momentum conservation, which indeed are the sort of constraints that you put on your S matrix elements. So if you take a, an S matrix, uh, so an amplitude of N particles, you can expand this in, or at least the polynomial part of this, this amplitude, in, in uh, some basis functions of uh, these, these polynomials. And the idea is that this, these basis functions are in one-to-one -one correspondence uh, with the operators. So that's a sort of 
Uh, oh, I, and and this 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 approach uh, has uh, has been developed uh, in, in lovely lovely directions, uh, particularly using spin helicity variables to to deal with this on the shell construction. Uh, in a paper that I had with uh, with Brian Henning, I think we 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 found a, a rather lovely way of understanding really what's going on here. A simple way of saying it is that you're constructing harmonics for a manifold that manifests this on the shell momentum conservation. This is the, manif this is the manifold of phase space. And so then the harmonics of this manifold are, uh, correspond to your operators in exactly the way that uh, you know, a basis for, for, a, for, for functions on a sphere would be spherical harmonics. The sphere, of course, manifests the condition of x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to one in these coordinates. Uh, you're doing exactly the same thing uh, for constructing operators uh, uh, on, on the manifold of phase space. And so this gives you a very simple way of saying what you're doing here is you're, you're constructing a power spectrum for whatever, whatever theory uh, you're, you're considering in this case, the standard model again. Okay, so this is the outline. This, this was the background. The outline is, uh, is actually, there's three parts in my talk. I'll focus mainly on part one, which is extending the triangle in this direction, thinking about the, uh, the partition function picture, but also developing the sort of amplitude um, uh, uh, direction as well, uh, using Hilbert series for loop calculations in, in effective field theory, and also developing this systematic Lagrangian construction, uh, in, in particular for these for chiral Lagrangians, but so for nonlinear symmetry and realization of symmetry fields. Okay, so let me start with uh, start with um, one. So this is going to be talking about asymptotic growth of these partitions of the standard model. So maybe I can just start by trying to make the concept of this Hilbert series. I've mentioned it a few times now, but I, I'm aware that maybe people don't know what a Hilbert series are, it is, or maybe people have heard of it and, and think it's something uh, terribly complicated. So let me try and dispel that uh, and make it a bit more physical. So, so let's start just by considering uh, some, uh, some system with some energy levels. And these, these energy levels are uh, spaced by an integer. And let me just call the, the, the ground state it has energy one, first excited to say energy two and so on. Well, you can think of like a, a harmonic oscillator here. So you can write down a partition function for this system. Uh, imagine that I'm gonna fill it with boson here. So I'm writing this partition function Z of Q, there's a variable Q here. This, this partition function is a product over N, one over one minus Q raised to the power of N. And maybe in more uh, sort of var variables that are more familiar, to make it look a bit more like a, a physical partition function that we're used to, I'm writing here this variable Q is really something like uh, uh, the exponential of an inverse temperature. And so that this, this product here just becomes a product over this, these factors here, where I'm taking in the, the energy level of the nth state divided by kT, where the, uh, the energy level here, I've just sort of normalized it so that the En is equal to N. And so this, this expression becomes what I, what I wrote here in the first place. Okay. And so this is, a, this is a partition function. It's a physical partition function for like a, a, a harmonic oscillator type uh, system. Um, and so, you know, you can ask the question, this partition function gives you exactly the answer to the questions such as how many configurations, you know, how many, how many configurations can I, can I construct that have total energy four? So I can, for instance, four particles, four bosons that live in the ground state. Uh, I can do it this way. I can put in one boson that lives on the fourth excited state. And of course, what you're doing here is you're, you're, you're constructing all um, the integer partitions of, of the number four. And so there are five possible ways of doing, doing this. And so this is exactly what you get from expanding, of course, this, this, this partition function out to order q to the four and looking at the coefficient in front of q to the four. And so this is this expansion just now where this p of n is uh, a symbol. This means the integer partitions of n. And this is hence why, why a partition function is called a partition function, because it gives you a generating function for the integer partitions of n in this way. OK, so you have this. Uh, you've identified what this partition function is doing. Uh, so what more can you say? So the, the uh, to actually under, close formulas for this uh, this partition, the, the number of partitions, are very complicated. Uh, there are some convergent formulas, but a very simple one uh, and a very famous one uh, uh, for the asymptotic form. So as n gets large, was given by Hardy and Ramanujan back in back in 1918, and this says that the the, the asymptotically p n goes something like this. And the important thing here really is that it grows exponentially uh, exponentially with n. So this is a formula for the, the number of partitions as n gets large, an asymptotic formula. And what this is doing is this is giving you some sort of high temperature information about this, this uh, physical theory. Because if you imagine in the high temperature, uh, the, the, the high temperature limit, so T goes to zero here, or if I, if I call 
beta inverse temperature, beta goes to, so t goes high, beta goes to zero, to sending this q to one. And so this sum is becoming, all the terms in the sum are becoming uh, very similar because q is going to one. And you're going to be dominated because of the growth is because of the growth is exponential. You're going to be dominated by sort of the rightmost term, if you like. Uh, this is telling you how the entropy or the number of ways, the number of configurations that you can make is growing as a, in the high temperature limit. And you have some analytic control over this using this, this asymptotic uh, formula here. Okay, so what does this have to do with uh, EFTs? Well, so you can consider uh, the partition function for a free scalar field. And so this is exactly the same uh, sort of energy level spacing here. The, I, I'm now just giving these, these states labels, the ground state, I'm gonna give a label of phi, and I'm sort of here, I'm appealing to the state operator correspondence, the one-to-one the -one correspondence between states and, uh, and, and the, the operators that I'm writing down. So the, the first excited state I'm writing is uh, partial mu on phi. And this has ex almost exactly the same partition function. The only difference here is that because we have a partial mu, if you live in D dimensions, uh, the second excited state has uh, a degeneracy of, of D, in fact, because there are D derivatives. Uh, this mu can take values uh, from one to D, if you like. Uh, so there are, there's some degeneracies here now, and this just appears as a, as a, as a power down, uh, down here in this expression. But it's really exactly the same thing. And so again, you can sort of re rewrite this, expand it uh, in, a, in, a, in a series of Q. So I'm summing over delta here. And this delta really now is just counting the number of operators, the number of configurations of, that, that, uh, that give you some particular mass dimension, or in this case, some, some particular energy. And so this is essentially a Hilbert. This is all a Hilbert series is. It is really just a partition function. Actually, Hilbert series, you, you project onto a particular subset of, of, of these states or operators that are, are Lorentz scalars. So there's like a there's projection to do, but that, that you know, the, the physical really is exactly this, that, that you're dealing with a, a partition function. And so, you know, for the standard model, for example, instead of a scalar field here, I could label, you know, I could deal with a full standard model and uh, each of these states uh, now, there, there are various different standard model fields and there's different degeneracies here. But uh, after projection to the scalars, again, you, you have this, this function, this partition function, this Hilbert series, and you're just expanding it out in, in, in powers of Q. And these numbers that appear in front, these partitions, uh, partitions of the standard model in this case, 2, 84, 30, 993, these are the, 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 the number of operators in, in uh, at various mass dimensions in the standard model EFT. And this is nothing more than just counting configurations uh, in exactly the same way as, uh, as this sort of free example, uh, where we were counting the number of bosons that add up to four. This is just counting the number of states, if you like, or the number of configurations that add up to some particular mass dimension. And so for the free scalar fields, returning to this, in, in uh, 91, Cardi um, studied the high temperature behavior of these partition functions. So he, he in fact, he looked at the leading asymptotic behavior of C uh, uh, um, to give some Hardy Ramanujan esque uh, formula for the real scalar field. And so this is, again, understanding something about the high energy behavior of the theory, is understanding about the, how the entropy of this theory goes in the high energy limit, how these configurations grow. And why is this interesting? So why might you consider this, uh, this, this, this problem, if you like? And the answer is, is pretty simple. It gives you some analytic probe of the S matrix. And any analytic probe of the S matrix uh, is, is, is something that, uh, that we're interested in understanding. And this you know, S matrix theory, for example, goes back to the 60s. A lot of the ideas such as on shallowness, unitarity, local, locality, et cetera, uh, find their place in, in modern amplitude techniques, for example, high loop uh, uh, calculations in QCD for the, for, the, uh, for the LHC. And in fact, a lot of these, uh, these kind of ideas on shellness, unitarity, recursion relations have been used in, uh, and also in EFTs, um, also in conjunction with sort of soft theorems in EFTs. A lot of uh, recent effort uh, has been going into understanding positivity constraints, including in the in the standard model EFT. Positivity constraints are the, 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 that you get on uh, Wilson coefficients. You can study EFTs in 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 the large charge uh, sector uh, to obtain uh, um, uh, a description of even strongly coupled series by using the sort of large charge as an inverse. Uh, large parameter to do an expansion, and there's been a recent uh, uh, recent attempts to to bootstrap the the S matrix and first principles, uh, in in a similar you know using ideas from the the this revival of the conformal bootstrap, and so these are all uh, ideas that exist, all, all ways that exist of analytically probing the S matrix because we're interested in this object, and the asymptotics, looking for the asymptotics 
is exactly the same thing. It's just, but it's, it's just a study of the high temperature behavior of the theory, but it's somewhere else where we can get some kind of analytic control. And so if you can get any an analytic probe, uh, the S matrix, then, then, then that's interesting. And there's some very famous results on this in, in D is equal to two that go, that go back to Cardi in, in 86. However, much less uh, is known for D greater than two, uh, except for this paper that I, I mentioned before here. And just sort of say all that again in a, in a picture, you know, a lot of these uh, probes of the S matrix that we have live down here, looking at low point amplitudes, two to two amplitudes, two to three amplitudes for things like positivity, uh, S matrix theory or S matrix bootstrap. Large charge expansion is a little different. It's looking at uh, this, this, this large charge sector. So, so if you like operators that have large number of fields and but this is then looking around a minimum here and looking for excitations around a ground state, um, for example, looking for uh, uh, phone or the description of phonons in, in, in a superfluid. That's one example. This asymptotic, uh, uh, this asymptotic study uh, is, is again uh, looking at very high mass dimensions. So you're probing very far away from this low, uh, low, low point amplitudes here. But it's some, uh, some way of getting some handle uh, just to study EFT. And so what, what I'm going to present here is just the, uh, the, the, the first step, the, the zeroth order step of understanding the free uh, field theory. And so this is this is in this paper with uh, Sridip Pal, who's a who's a postdoc at Princeton, and the main results. I'm just going to give you the main results that we found. We found asymptotic formula for arbitrary space and dimensions, arbitrary spin particles. We also understood how to get asymptotic in the way you project to subsets, for example, Lorentz or internal symmetry singlets, and also a procedure to fully capture the subleading terms. This sort of all generalizes in the numerous, di numerous directions the, the work of Cardi uh, in, at the start of the 1990s. So let me just give you one example. Since I've been showing this all along, let me give you the example to the standard model EFT. Uh, and you know, to, to do this, actually, we had to generalize a, a, a theorem in the mathematics literature um, uh, from the 50s by Maynardus in order to get all these uh, subleading terms correct and uh, sort of understand the projections. But this is, this is the data of the standard model EFT. This is the, the mass dimension. This is the number of independent operators up on the y-axis. Um, and so this is the, the analytic result that we get out of our analysis. This is an asymptotic result. So this is only supposed to be correct, uh, uh, you know, as delta goes to infinity. However, you can see already we, we haven't tweaked anything here. This thing just lies right in the middle of these, even these low mass dimension data points, which is rather interesting, actually. Um, but this is it. This is, this is, a, this is a hardy manager and S formula for the integer partitions of, of the standard model. And just to give you a, a very brief idea of where this, 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 this rather bonkers, these, these numbers comes from. Uh, so all of these numbers have some some origin, and these origins uh, are to do with the uh, the field content of the standard model. So that's the that's the input. Uh, you know what what type of particles you have, how they transform under uh, internal symmetry groups and uh, and under uh, the Lorentz uh, group. And so there's a there's a suppression that comes uh, from uh, uh, the uh, by by projecting to internal symmetry group singlets. There's a suppression that comes from projected to Lorentz scalars. There's a suppression that comes from using integration by parts and implying that, um, uh, uh, imposing that rather, and keeping uh, only the primary operators in this case. And then there's some, uh, there's, this is the, there's an exponential uh, growth here in delta, this, this delta to three quarters. And the sort of the prefactors here really have their origin in just how the fields, uh, um, uh, how many fields you have that are uh, bosonic, how many fields you have that are fermionic, how many fields you have that uh, uh, spin half, how many fields you have spin one, and so on. Uh, and so this is this is the sort of information that goes into obtaining this formula. Okay, so that was uh, that was the, the the part one. Let me now skip uh, to this this other direction coming down from the sort of more amplitude di direction. So this is the the use of Hilbert series for loop calculations in EFT. And so I'm now going to be uh, going to be reasonably brief uh, on these two. So, you know, Hilbert series and polynomial rings really uh, have been studied uh, for the construction of the elements of, of S matrix. So this is where you take an amplitude, where everything is on shell and momentum is conserved across this, this uh, amplitude. And one can work with a, either a physical basis or with a physical basis of operators and you're assured to, to capture all the independent uh, effects. Uh, and as we've heard a lot in this in this session, you can turn the logic around to find the independent operators as well by, by using these, these on shell amplitudes. And let me give you this, I, I've mentioned again this polynomial ring a couple of times, now let me just give you, 
excuse me, sorry. I've lost my... Uh... I, uh, Tom, you have in total five minutes left. Thank okay, you. That's, that's perfect. I have about five minutes. Can you see my screen again? I've got a phone call. Yes. You can see... Okay, perfect. Um, so this polynomial ring, this, this, this just means that this amplitude or the polynomial part of this amplitude, it's just going to be a function of some elements, which are Lorentz scalars, and this could possibly be uh, the, uh, the um, external particle momenta squared, so P, pi squareds, or it can be uh, a function of these pi.pj's. That, that, that's it for, for the case of scalar fields. And the on-shellness, so this sort of slash means you're going to impose some relations on this polynomial ring. So it's not just all polynomials made up of these elements, you're going to impose some relations between them. So the on-shellness just tells you straight away that you can remove these pi squareds. And there are uh, a, a bunch of relations between the, uh, well, the pi squareds and the, the pi.pj's that come from the, uh, um, come from the uh, effect of momentum conservation. And so this, 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 I've written this just, I've just got rid of the pi squares and I've, uh, I've left this as some, some polynomial ring where you still have relations between these pi.pj elements uh, that, that, that come from this momentum conservation. However, there are, there are other scenarios where one might want to relax the on shell or the momentum conservation requirements. And this typically comes, uh, comes about when you're uh, interested in calculating loops or renormalizing an EFT. And so there you might call, calculate an object such as an off shell Green's function. So here there's momentum conservation across the, this, this um, uh, correlation function, but the, the particles are, are left off shell, which I'm sort of uh, depicting by a cone here. Or you might compute something like a form factor where you keep all your external particles on the shell, but uh, you have some non-zero uh, momentum inflowing into this, into, this, uh, into this diagram here. And so in these cases, the, the sort of the, the, the constraints on the polynomial ring are a little bit different. So in, in this case, you just have a constraint of momentum conservation. In this case, you only have the constraint of on shellness. In fact, you can show that these, oh, I mean, it's kind of uh, it's simple to see, in fact, that these, these two constraints basically reduce you to the same ring on, on, on both sides. And it's just a, a ring in just PI, PJs. Uh, so the ring in these Mandelstam invariants. So that's a polynomial ring picture, but really all the all the required uh, sort of knots and switches for, for Hilbert series that allow you to sort of count operators under these conditions on shallowness or momentum conservation on or off. Uh, these were developed in this in this paper here. So they're, they're sort of various switches that are very useful for for turning on and off effects when you're doing these these high loop calculations. Uh, um, and uh, spatial dimension is another example of using dimensional regularization. That's a very useful knob to, to, to turn, uh, to change the space-time dimension that you're working in. And really there's the bottom line that I want to say here is that all the ideas for the physical basis, you know, the Hilbert series applied to the physical basis, carry through to systematically enumerate, or construct or relate and understand the relation between different bases that are useful for, for loop calculators in EFT. And so really the picture here that I, I just want to just give is that, you know, when you go and do one of these calculations, there is some kind of metric of difficulty uh, as you uh, as you increase the number of loops or as you increase the number of legs. If you're working in an EFT, there's another direction to add to this, and that's the direction of the uh, EFT expansion parameter, so in mass dimension. And basically this the Hilbert series and related ideas here are, are an extremely useful tool. To, to sort of help you uh, help you uh, overcome this uh, the, the, the difficulties that you encounter in these um, calculations. And so please uh, see see Jasper's talk tomorrow for, for more details about the actual calculation. Okay, and then in the last uh, minute, I just wanted to give really just an update, I suppose, or an advertisement for for the systematic construction of, uh, of um, Lagrangians in the case where the fields transform non-linear representations of some internal group. So this is like a uh, chiral Lagrangian. And in fact, you know, this, this systematic construction was, was given in, in this S matrices operator basis paper, uh, but including all the sort of bells and whistles to apply it to the QCD chiral Lagrangian took a little bit of time uh, and quite a bit more development. And so for instance, giving mass to the to, to pi, so including external fields, coupling to gauge fields, this kind of stuff in order to make contact with the literature. And so this Lagrangian looks very different to, to the linear or standard model EFT Lagrangian. So here there's a U matrix, which is given by this expression here. Um, 
but just to just to flash the results. So you know, clearly we could do the same thing for the for the QCD carrier Lagrangian as we could do for the SMEF. And so here it gives the the, the the history of constructing these um, these uh, different uh, operators at various different chiral dimensions. The counting is a little bit different. Um, and really, uh, you know, so two things just to, to, to say about this: we we gave the first identification of all p to the eight so-called anomalous terms. So some p to the eight terms have been worked out before, but what had been missing is the class of terms that involves an epsilon tensor from space time epsilon mu nu mu nu rho sigma in the in the operator. <laughs> and there's no symmetry reason to to separate these terms out. Actually, uh, they they they're still CP even uh, terms, even though they include this epsilon uh, tensor. So so we we we've completed in that sense the the identification of all the anomalous uh, of all the p to the eight terms in the chiral Lagrangian. And uh, the other thing that we did was develop a systematic treatment of car uh, charge conjugation invariance, very much in line with the previous treatment of, of space time parity that we developed uh, uh, in Hill theories in, in past work. And that was also necessary in order to, to sort of disentangle the, the contributions and compare with the literature. Okay, so that's it. That's my conclusion. So I, I think you know the, the, the real conclusion is that there, there are many, many developing new directions and uh, ideas and the, uh, this sort of hill bit series for EFT program uh, are actually very general and uh, they, they, they can be widely utilized. So that's, thanks. thanks for listening. Okay, thank you, uh, Tom. Yeah, I think we really have time for just one question and Andreas raised the hand, so please. Hi, thanks. So I was wondering about this asymptotics and you say that the low number of uh, points really was captured by the asymptotic line. So how generic is that? If you have like one single scalar or different field content or different symmetries? One single scalar is even better. So I don't have the plot here. I don't know, I can put the plot, I guess, in Slack or I can send it to you. But yeah, for one, for one single, for real uh, scale field, we were, I think, already at the uh, part per mil, so per, per mil agreement within a few mass dimensions. It was really, really good, which is like kind of amazing, given this is only supposed to be an asymptotic formula. Uh, and we wondered a little bit about this. And I don't know, I don't know if there is something in it or not. I mean, <clears throat> You know, the, so the asymptotic formulas for the, the integer partitions, these are uh, um, uh, improved to, to become a convergent uh, uh, um, uh, expression, you know, by Rademacher. And so I, I don't know if there's anything, if, that's, if there's any indication, I mean, we did think about this a little while, if there's any kind of indication that you can have similarly obtain a convergent, uh, a convergent uh, expression for, for these uh, partitions, um, but yeah. But then it just might just just be agreeing well just because it is. So it's uh, it's a little hard to say anything conclusively. We didn't we didn't do a very systematic uh, analysis of the errors. Okay, so thanks. To complete, one would have to do that. Okay, um, then let's uh, thank Tom again for the very uh, nice talk. Um, so then. Uh, I would propose we make the coffee break shorter, so for 10 minutes, so come back uh, in 10 minutes to continue with the next uh, session, um, if there's no objections. And thanks again, uh, there's uh, all speakers in the first half uh, morning session. Thank you, and see you in 10 minutes.